Welcome back to ASEAN News, and here is the latest updated with me, Vanessa. Thailand releases 3,000 people involved in marijuana cases after the state legalized marijuana. Over 3,000 prisoners convicted of cannabis offenses are released across Thailand after the country became the first Asian nation to delist marijuana as a narcotic drug. According to local media, thousands of inmates from various provinces walked out of prison grounds and were greeted by their relatives upon their release after cannabis and hemp were removed from the Category 5 drug list. Thailand legalized the growing of marijuana and its consumption in food and drinks with the aim of boosting its agriculture and tourism sectors, but smoking pot is still against the law. The Southeast Asian country, which has a tradition of using cannabis to relieve pain and fatigue, legalized medicinal marijuana in 2018. Thailand people queue up enthusiastically to buy marijuana after the state legalized it. <laughs> Cheers and applause ring out as the first customer entered a store selling marijuana, purchased it as Thailand became the first Asian country to decriminalize the growing and consumption of cannabis. Ritipong Dakul says he had been keeping from the night before to witness the beginning of change, adding that the move to legalize cannabis would ease worries about quality. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Long queues are seen forming at the store Highland Cafe, which sells various strains costing between 450 to 2,100 baht, as advocates of the plan welcomed the reform in a country that has long had reputation from strict anti-drug laws. Authorities aim to head off an explosion of recreational using by limiting the strength of cannabis products that are legal. The possession of sale of cannabis extract containing more than 0.2% of its psychoactive ingredient, tetrodrocannabinol, is not allowed, which will rule out smokers of the drug known as pot weed and host of other names from getting high. Cambodian court jail six opposition figures, including prominent lawyer for committing treason. A Cambodian court handed down jail sentences to about 60 opposition figures, including prominent lawyer Thierry Seng for conspiring to commit treason in a mass trial condemned by the United States and right groups as politically motivated. According to Reuters' witness, after the verdict was announced, Terry Seng was bundled into a police pickup truck outside court, sparking scuffles between officers and her supporters. She had not been allowed into court due to her attire. Her lawyer says she would consider appealing nothing. She and the other co-defendants had been sentenced to between five to eight years in prison. The verdicts are likely to renew international concern about Cambodia's veteran Prime Minister Hun Sen and what his critics says has been elimination over many years of opposition to his rule. Hun Sen denies persecuting his opponents. Expert warns of Mount Bulusan in the Philippines, which actively erupted last week, could erupt again at any time. Scientists warn Mount Bulusan volcano in the Philippines, which has erupted twice in just one week, could erupt again any time. Ash plums as high as 750 meters could be seen coming out from vents in the mountain site. The Philippines Institute of Volcanology and Seismology has recorded more than 100 volcanic earthquakes in the region since Bulusan erupted early on the morning and then again a week later. Despite the continued volcanic activity, authorities have allowed some people to return to their homes near the foot of the mountain, although not all residents feel confident. The Philippines Institute of Volcanology and Seismology urges residents to stay alert as Bulusan is an active volcano and eruptions are not uncommon, with dozens of similar eruptions as recently as 2016 and 2017. 
Chinese experts say the United States intervenes in Asia-Pacific region development under guise of security issues. Chinese military expert says the so-called military version of Indo-Pacific strategy being vigorously promoted by the United States at the 19th Shangri-La Dialogue is to intervene in the development of the Asia-Pacific region under the guise of security concerns which will undermine the prosperity and stability of the countries in the region. During the summit, United States Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin delivered a speech titled Next Steps for the United States in the Pacific Strategy and made unfounded accusations against China. Meanwhile, the expert says the countries in the region need to be vigilant over the United States' repeated remarks on changing political circumstances around China. The so-called Indo-Pacific strategy proposed by the United States is calling for an anti-China alliance to contain China's development. The expert says the United States is constantly provoking confrontation and division among the countries in the Asia-Pacific region all because of its national strategy, which has been seen through by the countries in the region. The three-day summit was held in Singapore after the two-year suspension due to the COVID-19 pandemic, focusing mainly on the security in the Asia-Pacific region and viable solutions. Chinese delegations say China and the United States have a good relations in mutual interests. Chinese delegation attending the Shangri-La Dialogue in Singapore says that the stable development of China and United States relations is in the common interest of the two countries as well as the world at large. Both China and United States are important powers in the world. The world peace and development cannot be achieved without China-United States cooperation. Confrontation will do no good for both countries and the world. At the same time, the two militaries should strengthen strategic mutual trust, avoid misunderstandings and misjudgments, manage risks and crises, and prevent friction and conflict. China hopes to establish a healthy and stable major country relationship with the United States and will also firmly defend its national interest and dignity. On the South China Sea issue, Wei said that countries in the South China Sea region are bonded neighbors with time-honored relationship who should guard against external countries to mess up and sow disorder in the regional neighborhood. Australia and Japan want deeper cooperation in security ties. Australian Defence Minister Richard Marley says Australia wants deeper cooperation with Japan as the two United States allies face complex security circumstances in Asia as a result of Russia's invasion of Ukraine, rising inflation and COVID-19 disruption. In Marley's first official visit to Tokyo in his current role, he attended a welcome ceremony with his Japanese counterpart Nobuo Kishi before the two sat down to a bilateral meeting. The allies have been increasing defense cooperation as a counterbalance to China's growing military power and influence in Asia. How impressive your honor card was. Russia's invasion of Ukraine is spurring a deepening of those ties as concern that what Russia calls it a special operation could encourage China to use force against self-ruled Taiwan. Marley says Australia and Japan will use a reciprocal access agreement signed in January to engage in deeper and more sophisticated cooperation that will strengthen their military's interoperability. With even greater confidence and coordination. Prime Minister of Japan expects the Bank of Japan to continue efforts in achieving the 2% inflation target. Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida expects the Bank of Japan to continue efforts to achieve its 2% inflation target when asked about the possibility the central bank may tweak its massive stimulus to stem the yen weakening. Kishida on a news conference says specific monetary policy is up to the Bank of Japan to decide.
while few expect the bank to make a change to its policy of yield curve control, which guides the yield on the 10-year Japanese government bond around 0% sharp falls in the yen currency are making some lawmakers anxious. Prospects of aggressive United States interest rate rises have pushed up long-term interest rates around the world, including in Japan, forcing the Bank of Japan to ramp up bond buying to defend its yield cap. Local government providing emergency response after major flood occurred in East China. Major floods occurred in southern and eastern parts of China following days of heavy rain prompting emergency response by central and local government authorities. The Ministry of Natural Resources issues a level 3 of alert for floods, the third highest level in the provincial level regions of Fujian, Jiangxi, Guangdong and Guangxi, and dispatched work groups to the affected areas to guide flood prevention and control works. In Shaoguan city of South China's Guangdong province, firefighters evacuate more than 6,200 rural residents from Cheshire flood water as rainstorms inundated bridges and low-laying villages. In East China's Fujian province, persistent heavy rains have disrupted the local railway services with nearly 80 train runs cancelled or remarshaled. Philippines and Indonesia fans are broken after BTS announces hiatus. Filipino and Indonesian fans of BTS says they are heartbroken after the South Korean band that spearheaded the global K-pop craze announced they were taking a break as a group to work on solo projects. <laughs> Michaela Balmaceda told Reuters she was sad when the news broke but said the artist deserved a break. Let them enjoy their lives without all the cameras, the fuss, the chaos, just time to themselves. In Jakarta, fans were seeing at an art exhibit featuring BTS members. Amel, who like many Indonesians, goes by one name, said her eyes were swollen for crying but added members of the band will always have her support. The group had recently released a new album and met U.S. President Joe Biden at the White House in May to discuss hate crimes targeting Asians. And that's the whole news for today. Stay safe, stay healthy. See you.